Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today, something a little bit different. Um, as you know, if you've been with me a while, I love my Japanese fabrics and I've done a few projects and really enjoyed the, I guess, the simplicity of them. So what I'm doing now is this project is actually a gift for someone else. But what I need to do is put together a package and kick start it off so that they can just pick it up and run with it. Now I know the lady getting this, um, she loves this style of stitching. I asked her uh, in trying to understand what sort of little um, task I could create for her to play with. She's with me for a few days and I said to her if she walked into a craft store and one side of the shop was all um, beautiful florals and pastels and um, French fabric styling or the other side of the shop was indigos, um, beiges and a bit of a Japanese influence, what side of the shop would she go to? And this is where she said every time. And I have noticed when I've uh, seen her, she's been wearing clothing that she's pieced together out of um, indigo fabrics, Japanese fabrics, um, jeans, and then she stitched on top of it. Just simple, beautiful stitching. And uh, she just has a certain swagger, if you, if for want of a better word, in the way that she wears these textiles. So I've been racking my brain of what I can get her to do. Now I've only got her for, a, you know, a week, so I can't go crazy. And that probably would be too much work, but that's my inspiration. So what I'm thinking is she can refer to this as, you know, a bit of a visual picture, but I've prepared a snippet roll. So I've just got one of these old fashioned bobbins and they are allowing me to have a four inch wide strip of felt. I really like working with, oh, it's not felt, it's a wool. You buy this by the meter at our local spotlight and um, you can put it into quilts. So I really enjoy stitching into it. It's got a nice substance about it. So what I've done so far, and I thought oh, I'd better turn the camera on because I'm scooting ahead at a rate of knots. I've laid out the strip on the desk in front of me. It's a little bit over a meter, I think. So let me just pop this one away. Now, I have also, in anticipation, ordered an extra pack of um, fabrics by Bitten by the Bug. Now, I've reviewed the little order. This, I don't know where I put it now. This is all the indigos from the order. Must be back in the box. I reviewed the fabrics in a video as well, which has been uploaded today as well as this one. It's like only about a 10 minute video. So if you are interested in the fabrics and where I got them and what I ordered, um, that video will be linked below, but you may have already spotted it anyway. So I don't think I'm gonna use indigo fabrics in the project, but they're available if we find that it needs a little bit of indigo dyed fabrics where well, we can work it in. But I'm really enjoying the density of the Japanese fabrics. So where am I at? Um, I'll talk about threads in a minute because I did order those, but I'm a bit of a fan of just cream. And those could be used as little details on some of these plain bits. I could get her one of these um, sashiko threads but I don't think I will I'll see what she says if she if she really wants to play with some of this because she's never tried it but I'd say she would have I can always get her started on this little bit left from my project and um, get her another one but I'm thinking along the lines of the beige I really like how it sort of coordinates now, where am I at? Let's put threads aside for a bit. I do have some more beigey tones, but I have cut out a few pieces 
of beige, which probably will be enough. Now, let me just bring this into camera. So what I did in the preparation of the project, I laid down a heap of the squares, which I thought all worked. There they are there. So I know I'm roughly the distance of the fabric, probably still a little bit shy. Then I went back through and laid down some lighter fabrics. So let me just show you, that's what I laid down first. Let's get all that off. So I think I am a little bit shy in getting the distance there alone. So all darks with a couple planes, plain, plain, plain. So there's three plain fabrics in the darks. Then I came back through and picked some lighter fabrics, a plain, a plain, just light, just light, a plain, and another lighter one. And then just some little scraps, just to show her that this is what is okay as well, to lay in, to create some, you know, interest. So that's, I think, enough fabric to complete the task. I'm pretty sure. Maybe I'm being a little bit, little bit mean. I might pop in one of these as well, nice and plain. So she did some stitching on that. In any of those colours, it would really show up. But I'll pop that in as well. Actually, that's French. We can do better than that. Let's go back through these fabrics. I don't want French fabrics. Did I get some of that? Yeah, I did. Um, Let's have a look in my box. So then the next thing is, you're probably wondering, what are you doing with it, girl? There's another plain fabric and a little bit lighter. So let's cut a little piece of this as well. Well, the plan is that she will lay them down like I have, but creating a, a bit of a background and just doing boro stitch, you know, just doing all this type of work. But on the plain bits, I wanted to do this work and that work, using the stencils and that work. So, and then what I'm thinking is getting some... Um, twine and then couching that on to create like a big branch going through with lots of sprigs in that and then putting over the top of it cherry blossoms so that's that's sort of where I'm thinking so what I want to do is I want to actually work a section of it to get her started so when she leaves if she only gets a little bit done, she can refer to what I've started. So that's that's the plan. So I think I have enough fabric now to kick us off. So let's just pack this up according to what I've packed. So we've got planes that can have something drawn on. We've got little snippety bits, more planes, backgrounds. See these patterns, I've got the little, there's a plane, I've got the little, um, I can't speak, I've got the stencil, that's what I'm trying to say. So there's our little mix of fabrics. And if she was to put down the background first, then a few lighter bits and some details, but before she gets too far ahead, working in a few planes so that stencils like these can be sketched in to create little pockets of embroidery as well. Now, <clears throat> the one I love is the dragonfly, so we definitely have to do that. He's here somewhere. There he is, little dragonflies. So I've got plenty of those to do. So 
some bits and pieces with. I think that's probably, I've got plenty more plain fabric to the side of me here, so. Yep. Now, let's start getting our, our background down. I'm going to have to pull myself up about here. I also bought some applique pins for the project <clears throat> so that they're, you know, not too big. Now, I think we need very quickly, excuse me, <clears throat> we need very quickly a plain piece of fabric put in to do you know, some sketching. So down with the first one. <clears throat> now which design will we use? I do enjoy this arch and that'll fit really well on there now i have a chalk pen i have black pens there's a black one so what we might do is get this sketched in onto my piece so this is my inserted embroidery element and she can then see that she needs to make that decision before getting sort of too far. Otherwise, you won't have a big enough piece to embroider. But it's all about just getting it started, gifting it to her and then letting her go and she'll have enough goodies to sort of carry on but can see the concept and the... I guess the I guess the the vision for the piece. <clears throat> now if she doesn't like what I do, well she could just chop that section off and go for it. Definitely. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh goodness me. So I'm not sure how many videos this will be for you and I. I guess it depends on how long it takes me to pull off a little section. I'm thinking two, might be three. Now she's with me at the end of the month. So I'm just not sure, yeah, how, how much she will get done. She's, I think she's with me seven days, but we've got a few outings planned and we're just stitching I guess of an evening so let's be honest we're very easily sidetracked and she mightn't feel like doing it too she might just tuck it away and keep it for a rainy day which is fine but at least she'll have something to fiddle with she loves sewing so just not sure at what level she's at so I'm sort of trying to hedge my bets here a little bit This friction pen for those newbies out there will actually just iron out. So there's our little inserted piece which will be stitched. <clears throat> now it's just a case of where do we pop it? Might pop it at the top there. And then we'll go looking. another piece can you hear that that's bandit howling he's developed this new howl he he was a woofer now he's howling like a an old wolf I don't know what his story is he'd be coming up to the two-year-old mark so he's definitely maturing into an adult dog now and 
It's quite funny. He gets a real howl up, especially if Peppa's not around. It's like, and she'll just come running. <clears throat> it's like he's summonsing her. It's quite amusing. So I'm just, I don't know, randomly placing some pieces. Trying not to have straight lines. Every, every piece finds its own, own little space. <clears throat> Pins. He's just walked past my window. I don't know if he... There's a, a young male German Shepherd puppy across the road. And he'd be coming up to a year... Oh, no, he's probably eight months. And the female, the sister, is at the house next door to that. So there's just a lot of young young dogs around and there's all this chitter-chatter all the time. So I don't know if this howl that Bandit's letting out is something to do with the, the dog across the road or, oh, I don't know what he's up to. <clears throat> so I need something to come along here. I can't use a plane. I've got to go back into the prints. Maybe that little guy. I feel like I need a bit of light. Maybe I haven't got enough light fabrics for her. Too many darks. I sort of was thinking along the lines that the The um, <clears throat> what am I saying? I'm trying to finish a sentence here, but I'm not. I was thinking along the lines that I wanted a fairly dark fabric background so that um, yeah, I, I think I do. So that the here's a floral, hang on. I've got some more fabric here I haven't included. Yeah, that feels like it breaks it up a little bit. Yeah, I sort of felt like I needed the bark, dark background to make the cherry blossoms pop. It's finding that balance, isn't it? You want enough darkness so that the pinks and the reds all it sort of feels too similar to that. It needs to go sideways. I like these little applique pins. They're really small. I'm sure my thread will still get caught on them because that's just what happens. But um, yeah, I do, do, do like that. That's a pretty fabric, that. Oh, there's so many pretty ones. Like, you know, I won't cut it. Watch it. Mm, so easy just to keep going, isn't it? But one mustn't. Maybe I'll put that through there. And then that could have something drawn on it. Um, maybe I do. What am I?
I sort of feel like they look better on a dark color, but because I did them on this dark color on this and they really popped. I don't want to stitch that because they're gorgeous and that's not for me to stitch, I don't think. put them on that blue but it would be nice to have them sketched on and she kicks her project off with those but then how does the cherry blossom maybe we just need the one because the cherry blossom's going to just come scooting through. Yeah, I'm thinking we just want the one of them, to be honest. Just a little one. All right, we'll come back to that. What was I going to do? I was going to find a piece of fabric for in here. Under. I've gone quiet because I'm concentrating. trying to do maybe that's where I bring in this guy with the little where's my chalk chalk pen These chalk pens are a lot of fun. Can I fit? No, it has to be the little guy. Grab him coming down. Just as like a little... I use this chalk pen a lot. I just bought it at Spotlight. I think it's Birch Washable White Fabric Marker. And when you first use it, you don't think you're doing anything because you can't see it. But once it dries, there must be like a, I don't know, an alcohol or something in the, with the chalk to get it onto the fabric. And then it dries, leaving only the white chalk behind. So don't don't stress if you can't see it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a birch. There we go. There's a little dragonfly. I think the project's too small to use too many something but if she loves the dragonfly she can easily you know add more of them through the whole piece it is a a botanical type stitchery um these little stencils i just pick them up whenever i see them at a good price but i've got enough of them now i 
I've sort of got a few of each one. These were a good one because they gave you two at two different sizes. So if your project is in an itty bitty project, you've at least got the same print, but you know, a smaller one. And then the other one was, I think I got three different companies. That one had a pack of two. That one there is a good one too. It's so classic, isn't it? This one does have very rough edges, so it's a bit of a cheapy. And when they've cut it out with a, a laser, it's made it very, um, very abrasive. So a pen like this with a soft nib would quickly be destroyed if you were doing a massive project. So I would say I'm on the lookout for a better version of this guy and I'd probably get rid of it. This one is Perspex and it's really good. Really good brand. These are Perspex as well. So we've got plenty of those we can offer up to her. Might just pop him there. That's Bandit. Good old Bandit. Moaning and groaning and carrying on like a... Might pop a little bit of this in. I suppose if she's here a week and I find that she has not enough fabric, at least then I can get her some more bits and pieces. It's surprising how much you will need because everything underlays each other. It's like all tucked in. Need something here. Sort of looks a bit odd. piece something together to connect it all. I need another piece. Maybe this little guy. No. Maybe that's got to go more there. And that little guy comes on top of it. It really is just fiddling until you're happy with. Happy with your look. You don't want to cover the little dragonfly. Go to all that effort. And the little guy gets covered. Maybe he comes down a little bit. We'd have to make the stem of the plant sort of whip around him. Maybe then this little piece can fit up there. Oh gosh, you could fiddle with this for hours. <laughs> it's like this little cluster happening. Let's pin that down for now. It's not bad and I think that's as far as I'd want to go and I won't stitch these. I'll just get the background started. I think we'll see. I don't think I'll stitch them because they're good for her to do. She can either leave them for a rainy day and carry on. Carry on doing the background or... Do whatever she wants, hey? Okay. And I'll be doing a mix of running stitch, um, over.
the cast stitch, outlining things, just mixing it up a little bit. These little applique pins are very tiny and not the easiest to use, but they are good once they're in your work. Especially if you can get them going through to the other side with the point, then you've literally got nothing to catch your thread. See the how? Can you hear that? <laughs> it's an unusual. I wonder what that's all about. I'll just add a piece of this to the pile. There was another fabric here too that would be a good one to add a portion to it. Gets that real florally feel to it. It's a cack handed cut. That. Might nibble a piece out now. That one. That will do. If I keep going, there'll be nothing left for her to do. That piece up there is annoying me. That little guy. I think I can bring that up. That's better. That's better. That's better. It's getting a bit messy there. And I really like that edge. So we want to see that. And this guy could come down a little bit. That's better. <coughs> Yep, okay, enough. Stop putting fabric down, girl. And let's tidy up our little bits so they're ready to go into a pack. But that's good. I think I, think I will need to add a little bit more to her <coughs> fabrics too. I just think it might be a little bit on the short side. If I keep all the planes together, and that'll remind me to tell her that that's all about, you know, the designs, the little sketches. So I might put a pin in them. <clears throat> backgrounds with a few lighter pieces to help get a bit of light in and some scraps <clears throat> there we go yeah she'll definitely need a little bit more fabric so let's just let's do that now while I'm top of mind and <clears throat> I do need to trim this guy off give her some more bits, 
bits and bobs. And we even got us some needles, so they're ready to go. Did I get a piece of this end? I didn't, did I? <clears throat> Don't need a lot. And there was this cherry blossom one here too. This is a pretty piece. Okay. Like I said, if we find that she's pieced out the background and um, she doesn't have enough well you know easily fixed easily fixed add these little guys and that little guy beautiful that should be that should be plenty. Now, the thing is, just doing, how are we going for time? Plenty of time. All right, now I'll show you what I've got planned for the cherry side of things. So, um, I need some twine. I should have grabbed that. I didn't think I'd be doing it in this video. <clears throat> Sorry guys, that took longer than I thought because I didn't have the twine where I thought it was. So what the plan is, is we will once the background's all stitched, the, the, the next stage is to couch on the twine. So you would use a little bit, cut it, then rejoin it. So building the branch as you go. Now this can be then split into smaller pieces so you get more of twig-like. So that's like stage three. Then I've been gathering together for some time fabrics that have cherries or remind me of cherry blossoms, not cherries, cherry blossoms. This is a, a favourite of mine. I've used it many, many times to cut out little flowers and I saw that at a craft shop, um, just a, a beautiful little fat quarter of it. So that's ready to go straight into her little pack. She'll get a full piece of that. And then out of my scraps, I was thinking of cutting out these little flowers and that'll put little white, tiny, itty bitty ones through and then use a bead. And I'll probably, I'm pretty sure I've got a, a bead that can go in the center of that like a little navy blue bead or a pale blue bead so that's a bit of a plan then i've got i don't think i'll use that but who knows she might want to really play with the colors and be a little bit of abstract but that is part of that print now the other thing i wanted to do is that's a scrap there's a few fabrics in the range, all coming from that woodlands. Is I found this one as well. So I thought the bigger cherry blossom could be cut out of there. And who knows, she might like to pop a few yellow daisies through. I'm, I'm just not sure. So those are part of it. Um, 
and then I found a, a plainer piece that I thought maybe a, a proper big cherry blossom would be cut out but I'm not 100% sure of that now that I talk it through with you guys I think they're going to be too big so I believe that what I've got is enough so I think I can put that away and out of my little scrap I can cut these little white guys out Like they're tiny. We've got to remember the piece is only tiny. So she can fussy cut out these little blue guys from that one pack of fabric. And then fussy cut out the red guys from the other piece. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So there's a little flower, like, <laughs> gosh, I hope this is not too minute. See what I mean? So there'll be these little cherry blossoms going over the whole piece. I'll cut out another two here. Yeah, I think that'll work a treat. So I'll use my scrappy bit to get start going so that one's got a flat side because he was on the edge of the fabric but that won't matter by the time you start clustering them together like this might drive a nuts she might not want to do this but I guess if she shows signs that this is too much what we could do is just do bits of the cherry blossom thing and then a gap and then bits again so you don't have to you know fill the whole thing full of hundreds of cherry blossoms so you've got to have wriggle room don't you you've got to be able to say all right if that's not you know something that you want to do it's too much commitment think it'll be all right but I think the secret will be just lots of little flowers and that'll just I think bring it up to life and what I'll have to do is probably open that up pinch a few out The other thing we could do is put a little bit of lace through it as well, just to make it interesting. You know, doily bits and that, but we'll see. Let's just get this started. It's got plenty of little guys there cut. Need a little tray for them to go into, otherwise this is going to be a disaster. Let's pop them all in a little tray. She could just about spend a day fussy cutting out all the little cherries. It's very cathartic, I find. So what I might do is I'll do some stitching on the background. Then I'll come back in the next video and we'll start playing with these little flowers. See, there's some here that are out in the open. A couple of those pink ones. They do have little... Like that one there. I think I could probably cut him out. He'd add a little bit of dimension if we had that third flower. Yeah, he's cute. Imagine him with a little pearl center. So 
There's not many of them, but... So that's pretty much the project, guys. That's what I'm thinking of doing. I'm not thinking anymore. It's a go. It's a done. Be just a case of a bit of stitching. Package it up. I've got a nice little sewing basket too. No, it's not a sewing basket as such. Um, I picked it up at a retreat. I've got two of them. I've got, well, I've got two friends coming and um, that's them there. So I'm thinking about packing their little projects into each one of those. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the other, the other one. She's very, very skilled at what she does. So she just love fabric. To be honest, I could just throw her a bundle of fabric and she'll just go for it. I do have a few patterns um, that I haven't had a play with yet that I'm thinking of also doing that week. And I'm not sure if this lady is skilled on the sewing machine or I'm just not sure. So we'll just play it by ear. But um, I'll take you guys along for the ride. I'll actually probably release this video around the time they're here. So I'm probably a month early. But I just need to get it done. Because the month will just go so quick. We've got so many projects that I'm working on that the month will go so blooming quick that suddenly I'll be racing around like a mad chook trying to pull it together. And I just, and the other thing, it's in my head. So I need it out of my head. tedious isn't it but when you're sitting around chatting with the girls munching on jam and scones and biscuits and cakes and you know all those things things like this are great because you don't have to think too hard it's just a little enter a light entertainment I'll cut out a couple more And then, hear it? That how? Has he got a wolf in him now? Is he not going to be a barker? He's going to be a howler. Isn't that interesting? I had an Aussie Shepherd male years ago before Pepper come along. He passed away sadly, so Pepper came along. And um, I thought, Oh, he was a barker. He had that big, deep wolf, wolf. But this boy. He's a whole different kettle of fish, this fellow. How are we going for time? At least got all my ingredients. Did you hear that? <laughs> He's at my window. There's no sign of Pepper. I wonder if Pepper's up to no good. My goodness. He sounds like an old bull. On the farm we'd have these old bulls that would... You know, do this bellowing. I wonder if it's a hormonal thing. Now, Mr. Bandit's growing up. There's a little pink one. How unusual. 
How interesting. Okay, that's surely enough for me. Um, <clears throat> I'll wait. I won't cut into this. I, I sort of half don't want to chop into it. So we might just take a breath. I've got enough here to at least scoot it along. And I can always then say to her, that piece of fabric in my head was here, here, here and here. You know what I mean? So we'll leave it at that. So let's get needle and thread. I don't need the hessian for a little bit. So let's get needle and thread. Let's get this a little bit started and then I will toddle off and um, come back to you in the next video with whatever I've been doing. So what are we going to do here? I might just do a good old running stitch. out of the way oh I love this style of stitching if you haven't tried it give it a go it is like rest for the brain it really is if you're working on something quite elaborate this is all about taking a moment just to stitch and I just find it so for me this is my R&R. &R. I don't have to think about colours too much. They just work. The palette is already sorted. I know I love it because I love navy and beige. So I'm just sort of sneaking in under those with my needle. I come up and I go another row. Simple as that. Trying not to pull my tension too much. And away we go again. Up and down, up and down. Like how easy can it get? I would have loved this as a kid if I had knew it existed. Oh, I wish I had have had the internet when I was a kid. Maybe I don't. I would have found all this. But when you're relying on encyclopedias, there probably was a tiny little section that commented about textiles in Japan and the old encyclopedias, and that wouldn't have been enough to catch my attention. I would have looked at the picture, gone, wow, and then gone. I would have been on to the next thing. So that's spotty fabric there. I'll probably just go around the perimeter because there's enough happening in it already and I'll start the cherry blossoms there. So there'll be flowers and the stem will kick off there. But we'll do that in the next video. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. We'll get this background all stitched down and then come back and have a play. It's as simple as that. This felt's the trick. Like, I do like calico. Don't get me wrong, everything is backed with a piece of calico to help with stability. But this felt really just feels so, I don't know, yummy under the fingers. Is that a technical word? Love how the fabric takes on its own personality once stitches are run through it. I 
I might even do some horizontal ones just to mix it up a little bit. Bring this array a little bit closer to the last just to make it look interesting. It doesn't mean that I have to stitch, you know, too far in because once you sort of get it started, she'll know what she wants to do. I don't think I've got enough to get back. Let's not be stingy. Let's end it off. Okay. More thread. Like the white sashiko thread would have been probably keeping it tradition no traditional. But I really like the cream. I, I just can't get past the the blend. The blendingness of the cream. Just looked at the time. Where did that go? Just going to finish off this row and the next. Might do it really close together. That'll give me room to do. another row there and that'll keep that top edge of the fabric nicely attached to the piece of felt so that it all just stays together. I remember learning that what I was doing there, rocking the needle through the fabric, another name for it is stacking. Stacking the needle makes it quicker less um less work on your hands and your fingers because you're not doing the whole european method of up and down up and down Okay, so then um, as I come to this end here, I'm going to just take the needle behind as if I was ending off, but I have a bit of thread left. So what I want to do, let's just pin you back into position. Get everything flat again. It does wriggle around a little bit. Um, is just have a look at maybe bringing some stitches down through. Yeah, I might bring right down here and catch that guy. Makes it more interesting if you start then. At the moment, I'm focusing on one piece of fabric. If you focus then on the whole piece, instead of the one. So what I might do is run this right through. 
doesn't look any good, just pull it out. And then I might put maybe two or three vertical lines down because three always looks a little better. Okay, it just changes that whole look of that piece. If I do a couple more through there, it sort of becomes a another layer of stitching over over the piece. Now this will disappear a bit in this fabric. It's not the best background to be stitching because it's so busy itself. But the more you look, the more you see with this type of work too. I'm going to end that off. That at least uses that bit of thread, anchors it to the end of the felt. Let's do a little slip knot. There we go. Now you can go through and tack, you know, all that down. If that's, you know, oh, I love how those lines are going up and they're going across. I do like that. Oh, we've hit the hour. All right, everyone. I'm going to leave it at that with you. I'll keep doing some stitching and get my back pieces down. Well, not all of them. I'll leave a few pins in amongst it. I don't know. We'll see. It's so hard just to stop. Be nothing left for it to do. So I might just actually start here. I'm going to do another line right through. Turn around, come back down to that bottom edge. And then finish off the bottom edge. I should be turning the camera off. But I'm still going. It's interesting when you start doing directional layers of stitches. So my thread came unthreaded, of course it did. It's because I'm rushing and holding you back after class here. Okay, now I'm going to scoop back down there again. Isn't that pretty? I like the randomness of the stitches too, but we've got this crosshatch happening. Such a nice effect. What's that game we used to play as kids? Dots and dots and lines or dots and dashes where you take a turn to put in a line and trying to create that closed in square and then you'd write your initial in the square as you had just one one square or one point there's a random thought I'm going to keep going with that, you know. I really like it, even though it's a little bit disappeared on that there, like when I bring it up to the camera, I can still see it and it's giving a really nice texture. And I like the fact that this is going to get quite interesting up here. So there you go. I've changed my mind. I'm going to keep rolling through with that thread up and down, up and down. Talk about create more work. Could have been simple, but no, the girl's going to do more stitches than she had thought she would. Isn't that just typical? I think it would be pretty. It's got that mended feel, doesn't it? Mm, really quilted. It's a nice start. 
I may only need to go so far and then start the, the plant. We'll see. We'll catch you in the next video, guys. I better, better let you go. It's five past the hour as well. All right, guys, look after yourselves and I will see you in the next video. I don't know if it'll be tomorrow for this. It'll be somewhere in amongst it. It might be. I might keep them together so you can sort of see it done then. All right, look after yourselves and see you soon. Bye.